I'm Ray Mellon, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Thursday, January 7th, 2021. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film yesterday. The streaming service shared a first look photo for the movie Wednesday featuring Jennifer Gardner and Edgar Ramirez. Yes, Dear is based on the Amy Krauss, Rosenthal, and Tom Lynch and Held's children's book of the same name. In the film, Gardner and Ramirez plays a couple who agree to a yes day, or a day where they say yes to anything their kids ask. The teaser photo shows Gardner wearing uh, goggles and screaming as she is sprayed with water in a car. A car is wearing, a child's wearing, uh, seen wearing a scuba mask in the back seat. Netflix captioned the post, Jennifer Gardner and Edgar Ramirez are a couple who can't say no in yes day, where for 24 hours, the kids make the rules and the parents have no choice but to go with the adventurous flow. Um, the actor said, uh, on one day a year, I just say yes, we, uh, we want pizza with ice cream for breakfast or with toothpaste, or we want the, uh, I do it, I have years. Gardner has three uh, children, uh, daughters Violet, and Serafina and son Samuel with her ex-husband Ben Affleck. And she did discuss on the Jimmy Fallon show, The Tonight Show in 2019, how she does it yesterday with her kids. She also added, having three kids, they have different ideas. A 13-year-old and a 7-year-old have a different idea of what they like to get out of yesterday. Yesterday is directed by Miguel Arreteta and co-stars Jenna Ortega. The movie premieres March 12th on Netflix. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film Outside the Wire. The streaming service shared a trailer for the sci-fi action film Wednesday featuring Anthony Mackie and Damson Idris. In the preview, Mackie plays Leo, an owl soldier who teams up with Harp, played by Idris, a disgraced drone pilot. Harp is one of the few to know that Leo is an android super soldier. Leo and Harp are tasked with finding a doomsday device in a deadly militarized zone. During the mission, Harp removes Leo's failsafe, allowing him to break the rules and potentially go rogue. Outside the Wire is directed by Michael Hafstrom and co-stars Emily Beachman, um, Michael Kelly, and P. Lou Asbank. The movie premieres January 15th on Netflix. Netflix shared a first trailer for Outside the Wire in December. Mike is known for playing uh, Sam Wilson, A.K. Falcon, in Avengers Endgame and other films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He will reprise the role and become the new Captain America in the Disney Plus series The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Nova Dumezweni, who recently starred in HBO's The Undoing, has joined the cast of Disney's upcoming live-action adaptation, The Little Mermaid. Dumezweni will be portraying a new character in the, in the film who is not present in Disney's classic 1989 animated version of The Little Mermaid. The film stars uh, Halle Bailey as lead Ariel, Melissa McCarthy as the villainous Ursula, Javier Bardem as King Trinon, uh, Jonah Hall King as Prince Eric, David Diggs as Sebastian, Jacob Tremblay as Flounder, and Aquafina as Scuttle. Rob Marshall is directing the film based off the script by Dave McGee. The soundtrack will feature the classic songs from the animated film, along with new ones written by composer Alan Macon with lyrics by Lin-Manuel Miranda. McCarthy said in December, I watch what happens live, that production on the project is scheduled to resume in January in London after it was halted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Dimitri also recently starred in Hulu's No More People and will be seen in the upcoming HBO series Made for Love. Clancy Brown has joined the cast of the Showtime's upcoming limited series revival, Dexter, as the show's main villain. Brown will portray Kurt Cadwell, the unofficial mayor of a small town named Iron Lake. Brown's character owns several big rigs and a local truck shop. He is generous, powerful, loved by everyone, and should not be crossed. The 10 episode limited series revival will take place seven years after the 2013 series finale of Dexter. The show is about a serial killer in Miami who works for the police as a blood analyst. Originally ran for eight seasons from 2006 to 2013. Seriously, Michael C. Hall is returning to portray Dexter, who was last seen living in exile in the woods of Oregon. Sharona Clyde Phillips is also returning to the revival, which is expected to air in late 2021. Brown, who previously starred in Showtime's Billionaires, is a prolific voice actor who has portrayed Mr. Krabs, 
in SpongeBob SquarePants. Cobra Kai star Ralph Macchio addressed a number of fan theories and rumors surrounding his 1984 film, The Karate Kid on the Tonight Show. Macchio was asked if he initially didn't like the film's title, which other actors tried out for the title role, and if his character used to win the big tournaments was legal. Macchio told host Jimmy Fallon on Tuesday, I thought, and I was not the only one, thought it was kind of hokey, kind of cheesy title for a movie being directed by the guy who made Rocky and all this stuff. Uh, before noting that director John G. Avidson uh, suggested the poorly received title Eats Meets West in West. Macchio said that Charlie Sheen and Robert Downey Jr. had also tried for his lead role of Daniel LaRusso and argued why LaRusso's kick was legal. Uh, he, uh, Macchio said, if you look at the tape, Jimmy, if you look at the tape, not only does the ref say point where a win is a win, the opponent, who shall remain nameless at this point, literally argued charge ran into the kick. LaRusso had nothing to do but defend himself. Macchio reprised his role as Daniel LaRusso in Netflix's Cover Cut, the Karate Kid sequel series, which also stars William Zapka reprising his role as Johnny Lawrence. The pair are still rivals in the series and train competing dojos. Macchio said about working with Zapka on Cover Kai, the chemistry we had from the get-go is something I didn't expect to be as rich as it was. And that's the same thing with a lot of the characters. Cobra Kai Season 3 came to Netflix on New Year's Day. The series has been renewed for a fourth season. Gwen Stefani says he quest, uh, says she's questioned if her now fiancé, Blake Shelton, would ever propose. The 51-year-old singer discussed Shelton's magical proposal during Tuesday's episode of The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon following her engagement to the country music star in October. Stefani said Shelton managed to keep his proposal plan secret and caught her off guard. She said, I was actually pretty magical, wasn't expecting it at the moment that it happened at all. Didn't have any idea, nobody knew. I think he told my dad on my birthday about two weeks earlier. Stefani and Shelton started dating in 2015, following their respective splits from Gavin Rosdale and Miranda Lambert. On a Tonight Show, Stefani said she was beginning to have concerns about her future with Shelton, when he finally proposed, uh, she says, I got to tell you, it was sort of like, what's happening with us? Like, it was kind of off on my mind. Like, we've been together for a long time now. What's going on? I was in that place in my head. Shelton proposed during their trip with the family to their new home in Oklahoma. Stefani said the trip nearly didn't happen because of COVID. Uh, she says, we were this close to canceling the trip. We ended up making it all happen, and we were all here at the ranch, and it's basically happened. It was pretty magical. Shelton kept the engagement ring in his truck and eventually hid it in a cabinet at the ranch. Shelton proposed after Stefani, uh, after asking Stefani to get a fire starter from the cabinet where she found the ring. Stefani said, I opened the cabinet and there's this ring in there. I'm like, are you serious? We both started bawling. Stefani previously discussed her engagement during an interview on the Kelly Clarkson show in December. On The Tonight Show, Stefani also performed her new single, Let Me Reintroduce Myself. The song is her first non-festive solo single since Misery, released in 2016. It will appear on her forthcoming fifth studio album. James Marsden named Magic Mike as a film he regrets turning down while speaking to James Corden on The Late Late Show. Marsden said on Tuesday before discussing why he passed on Magic Mike after being offered a role to the film, there have been a few things I've said no to in the past that I'm happy I said no to, and a few things that maybe I could redo, I'll do it over. Um, he said, I had the fear that I would be edited out of the movie and all the lines would be uh, cut out and I would just be an extra running around in a G-string. So I think it was a lack of courage on my part. The actor said he probably would have had fun on Magic Mike, but said some people in his life are happy that he didn't take the role. The 47-year-old said, I have friends and family who still think that it is it was a wise idea for me not to do it because they don't want to see me like that. Marsden stars on The Stand on CBS All Access, based on the Stephen King novel of the same name. Marsden said about filming the series right before and heading into COVID-19 pandemic, it was strange having finished six months of doing a show about a pandemic, and now this is actually happening. 
Bucky Brewster revival will premiere on Peacock in February. The streaming service shared a premiere date February 25th and a teaser photo for the series Wednesday. Punky Brewster is a revival of the 1980s series of the same name. The new version follows an adult Punky played by Sule Moon Fry as she raises three kids as a single mom. Freddie Prince Jr. plays Punky's ex-husband Travis, while Sherry Johnson returns as Punky's best friend Sherry. The teaser photo shows Punky with Travis and Sherry alongside Izzy played by uh, Quinn Copeland a girl in the foster system who reminds Punky a lot of her younger self. Uh, Peacock released a trailer in April that shows Punky raising three kids. Peacock had uh, had its official launch in July. The service also developed a Save by the Bell reboot featuring Mario Lopez that premiered in November. In December, news broke that Fry and her husband, Jason Goldberg, have split up after 22 years of marriage. Fox announced Wednesday that Oscar winner Catherine Zeta-Jones will join the cast of its drama Prodigal Son in season two. Zeta-Jones will play Dr. Vivian Capshaw. Prodigal Son stars Michael Sheen as Dr. Martin Whitley, a serial killer dubbed The Surgeon. Billy's son Malcolm uh, Bright, played by Tom Payne, is now a serial killer uh, profiler. Dr. Capshaw is now an MD at Claremont Psychiatric Hospital, where Whitley is in custody. According to a press release, Capshaw will first appear in the second half of Season 2. Capshaw will assign Whitley menial duties like mopping the floors and cleaning bedpans. However, Whitley finds ways to integrate himself with Capshaw by helping her with her patients. Uh, Zaya Jones won the Oscar for a role as Velma Kelly in a 2002 movie adaptation of Chicago. Aside from the new characters Zeta Jones will play, season two will see Whitley getting closer with Bright, but revealing more family secrets in the process. As a result, uh, Bright will have to protect his mother, played by Bellamy Young, from the serial killer's ex-husband. Christian Burla and Michael Potts also get started in season two, according to the, the press release. Series regulars include Halston Sage, Lou Diamond Phillips, Aurora Prinino, Frank Hartz, and Kiko Anjet. Prodigal Stunt from, uh, debuted in 2019 as Fox's number one new drama with 9.3 million viewers. Prodigal Sun returns January 12th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fox. The 2021 AT&T Playoff Playlist live concert will feature a headlining performance from Jason Derulo. The 31-year-old singer and songwriter will perform during the virtual show Sunday ahead of the college football national championship game between Alabama and Ohio State. The streaming uh, live stream will combine the power of 5G to extend re- reality technology uh, to produce captivating multidimensional visual effects and seamlessly interactive moments for fans. AT&T Playoff uh, Playlist Live will stream for free on AT&T's YouTube channel, the Rulers Facebook page, CFP All Access, and the ESPN app. The Rulers says, I couldn't be more excited to perform at this year's AT&T Playoff Playlist list. The technology of the stage makes possible through AT&T. It's incredible and will make fans a, uh, jobs drop uh, wherever they are tuning in from. It's going to be a fun, energetic way to kick off the year. The 2021 College Football Playoff National Championship will take place Monday at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida. The Rilla released its fourth studio album, uh, Everything is Four, in 2015. On the Ellen DeGeneres show uh, in October, he discussed his following on TikTok and making TikTok videos with Will Smith. Dr. Dre's Los Angeles home was the target of burglars after the music mogul was hospitalized for a brain aneurysm. Los Angeles Police Department confirmed to NBC News that officers responded to a report of an attempted burglary on Tuesday night. Dr. Dre was hospitalized at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles on Monday. Four suspects were unable to get into the house and were apprehended by police following a short chase. Local station ABC4 reported. The suspects were caught in a white SUV. Several tools used to break into homes um, found inside in the vehicle. Local station's NBC4 reported. 
the investigation is coming. Dr. Dre, whose real name is Andre Ramel Young, told fans on Instagram that he will be fine from the ho- uh, he will be home soon from the hospital. Um, the rap legend said alongside a black and white photo of himself working inside a recording studio, thanks to my family, friends, and fans for their interest and well wishes. I'm doing great, and I'm getting excellent care. Um, shout out to, he continued by saying, shout out to all the great medical professionals at Cedars. What and love. E! News also confirmed that Dr. Dre was hospitalized for a ba- brain aneurysm. Uh, such stars as Snoop Dogg, Missy Elliott, and Ice Cube, but more supported Dr. Dre across social media. Fantasia Barino is, uh, has a baby girl on the way. The pregnant 36-year-old singer announced the sex of her unborn third child in an Instagram post Tuesday. Barino uh, shared the news alongside a photo of decorations, which included blocks that spelled out baby and pink, blue, and white balloons. She captioned, it's a girl. On Wednesday, Barino shared more photos from her gender reveal party and her future child's name. She wrote, Kaza London Taylor on side of photo of herself cradling her baby bump. Singer and hit Real Housewives of Atlanta star Candy Burris and musician Venzella Joy, Joy the drummer Williams, were among those to congratulate Barino in the comments. Barino says, uh, congratulations. Barino is expecting when her husband, Kendall Taylor, she has two children, daughter Zion and son Dallas from previous relationships, while Taylor is a dad to a son, Trisha. Marino announced her pregnancy while discussing her fertility issues on Instagram Live in November. She said, uh, keep trying, and you can, con- you can conceive. Uh, Marino and Taylor married in July 2015. Marino came to fame after winning American Idol Season 3, which aired in 2004. She released her seventh studio album, um, entitled Sketchbook in October 2019. And finally, jo- John Fogarty comments on the COVID-19 pandemic, the late George Floyd, and more in his new music video for Weeping in the Promised Land. Fogarty performs the new song outside on a piano that is located at the top of a hill, uh, released Wednesday on YouTube. The video also includes footage of empty streets, healthcare workers struggling, and the nationwide protest that took place for the killing of Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Uh, Fogarty sings, out in the streets, on your neck with the knee, all the families are crying out your last words, I can't breathe. Fogarty was the singer, songwriter, and lead guitarist and leader of Creedence Clearwater Revival, and he last released the album Fogarty's Factory in November. The project will feature the, mus- the musician covering Creedence Clearwater Revival songs with his adult children. And that is your entertainment report for Thursday, January 7th, 2021. This is Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Entertainment Report. Or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. Um, if you would like to if you would like to listen to any of the past episodes of The Entertainment Report, you can go to iHeartRadio. Uh, go to iHeart.com or use the iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.